Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Doki Doki Anomaly. An SCP dating sim. I got a key for this from the folks involved. Uh, so, keep that in mind, I got this game for free for purposes of doing this kind of shit. But let us begin. The first recorded death associated with SCP-8008, haha <laughs> boob, occurred on December 18th, 1997. The victim, John Paul Revere, 38, Caucasian male, was found pinned under his Dodge truck. Police on scene reported him being smushed to the neck like an empty tube of toothpaste. Exact wording. He was also smiling ear to ear and wearing a pair of novelty spiral lens glasses. The SCP Foundation became involved later when the local detective assigned to the case was also found dead. Dismembered by his own lawnmower, smiling broadly and wearing the same glasses. Apparently, this anomalous pair of novelty glasses Themed SCP-8008 allows the wearer to lo fall in love with literally anything. SCP-8008 Log, October 6th, 1999. The entire first cohort of researchers assigned to the anomaly has been redacted. The first three researchers were killed by an H2 pencil, a diamond necklace, and a pool noodle. Damn. Motherfucker got himself beat up by a pool noodle. Must have whipped him up nice. Have you ever been hit by a wet pool noodle? Bloody hates! It's like a stinging slap. It's a proper weapon, that. The place was found redacted in redacted, redacted. All the data after that has been expunged. Uh, what are we giving this guy a voice for? Uh, what am I supposed to do with this? There we go. I should. Oh, this is supposed to be me. What am I supposed to do with this? I shot the SCP-8008 case files in disgust and tucked the folder under my arm. Who do I piss off to get assigned to an anomaly with a 100% casualty rate? Must be because of the SCP-458 incident last month. Super infinite pizza box. Damn it. The heavy doors SCP-173. The sculptures enclosure are already open when I arrive. My assistant doctor, Theron Sherman, bows briefly as me, his way into the room, then returns to reviewing his notes. He flipped his pen in an elaborate loop between his fingers. His nervous fidget. The dozen D-class inmates inside are all staring intently at a vaguely peanut-shaped sculpture standing motionless in the corner of the room. After all, it only takes an instant when nobody has it in their direct line of sight, even a blink at the wrong time, and it will snap all our necks in an instant. Ah. Uh. Here comes Dr. Fields now from his experiment with SCP-682. I think that's the bloody lizard, motherfucker. Morning. He seems distracted. Morning, sir. Everything all right? He blinks, seeming to refocus. Yes, yes, everything's fine. Look at this strange pair of glasses Dr. Fields is handing me. This is it. I take SCP-8008, the novelty glasses from him, noting how light they are. Just a dark plastic frame and spiral pattern lenses. Dr. Fields wipes his hands off on his lab coat, as if to get rid of anything the glasses may have left behind. They look funny, but let me tell you. He swallows nervously. They're no joke. Dr. Fields nods and takes his leave. All right. I settle into the flimsy aluminum chair at the table provided and activate the microphone. No turning back now. Take a deep breath and pour on, put on SCP-8008, the novelty glasses. That was a sudden, 
sudden shift in musical tone. Uh, hello? I clear my throat, hoping my nerves won't be too noticeable in the video recording. Hello, SCP-173. Whatever she's thinking, deeply or completely brain dead, I can't tell. Can you understand me? That was something. I'll be continuing experimentation with you. Is that alright? Were you expecting someone else? She's looking for my predecessor. She's going to be disappointed. They're not coming back. But maybe we can be friends. She seems to like that idea. Beside me, Dr. Sherman scribbles something in his notes. Holy shit, her voice! I'm glad. Or oh, that. Sorry, I didn't give her a voice. I'm glad. Her voice sends shivers at my spine. I need to compose myself. Return to the basics. A goal here is to clarify exactly how SCP-8008 produces its hallucinations. Hallucinations, and to better understand its psionic properties. We will compare my subjective experiences to the audio video footage and Dr. Chairman's notes. To begin, I will show you some images. Is that right, SP-173? She seems to nod. She seems pretty eager. Perhaps this won't be as hard as I expected. Okay. I show her the image of a monarch butterfly in summer. What do you see? Butterfly. A butterfly? You know what a butterfly is? It's so difficult to read. Next I show her the image of a human face. And this? My love. What? Where are you, my love? Sir, what's wrong? I didn't realize it, but I'd stood up. Small ears on the back of my neck are standing straight up. Everything inside me is screaming to get away from this creature. Uh, nothing! I'm, I'm fine. It takes all my self-control to force myself to sit down. I can do this. Lastly, I show her an image of an actual- of her actual face. The blank spray-painted eyes stare up from the paper. That's one okay. What do you see here? Confronted with the image of her actual face, she seems distressed. No! No! The wasted body of other declassed personnel is slammed suddenly onto the table, looking up at me with wide eyes. His body is spasming at the sudden disconnection from his brainstem. His head is turned 180 degrees. What just happened? I didn't see, I blinked. The man on the table has stopped twitching. His iris is mid dilated. Around the room, the remaining D-Class have their backs against the walls. One woman is hyperventilating, covering her eyes. I blink too. And me. And me. Not again. Everyone just happened to blink at the same time. I remind D-Class personnel that any deviation from my contact protocol will have severe consequences. Like this kid, what done has his neck fucking twisted. Oh, we can see that. Beyond the obvious. Right. Right. Oh, wait. Sorry, sorry. Beyond the obvious. Right. I almost jump out of my chair as the timer beeps. We're going to end here for today. Please don't be upset. Oh, we'll be back tomorrow, okay? She seems relieved about that. Is that really something I should be happy about? I'll be waiting. Your voice. I don't think I'll ever get used to it. I remove SCP-8008, taking a moment to wipe the sweat from my face. Without the air glasses, I can see SCP-173 as it actually is. A monster of concrete and rebar, looming right in front of me. The corpse on the table seems to be staring at it, afraid to look away even in death. Nothing. I scrub through the grainy video again. No evidence of the young woman I'd been speaking to in the testing chamber. No evidence that SCP-173 was in any way communicating with me. She 
Just me wearing those ridiculous glasses. They spelled ridiculous wrong as I. Talking to myself. What? Uh. Okay. You get 3,500 points or I'll break your legs. 35,000, no, sorry. Probably doing this quick then. Uh. Alright, it's a match three all of a sudden. I'm fine with that, honestly. I'm just trying to do shit quickly. Interesting. Very interesting. Hmm. This music is really a bait for the town. Of, you know, getting my legs snapped. I didn't even read what she said. Awake with a start. What was that dream? Something about legs? And... What the hell? Thank you. Hmm? But what? She's gone. I reach up to touch my face, terrified that I might find SCP-8008 there. Just me. What did I just see? I dress and head down to the cafeteria to get some water. The clock on the wall reads just past 2 a.m. So quiet. Where am I? I am at a at SCP 8008's containment locker. I hadn't meant to come here. Is this how it starts? Slowly back away from the locker, the halogen lights in the hallway feeling overly bright. Supposing. There's nothing odd about SCP 8008's locker. Adlock is askew, since someone has been tampering with it. I realize it's been unlocked and then replaced backwards to hide the unclapsed mechanism. Looking inside, I confirm my fears. SCP-8008 is missing. I didn't do this. I'm positive I didn't do that. I check all my pockets, my face, and even on top of my head just to be sure. What are you doing here? I almost jump out of my skin at the sun voice. Yeah. Third researcher from our cohort is leaning against the doorway, arms crossed. She's wearing her lab coat, a pair of green slippers, and a concerned scowl. Well, is that what it looks like? I didn't even mean to come here. He waves away my concern, standing up straight. I know. What? It dawns on me that Dr. Singer had been assistant to the previous lead researcher. The one who'd been redacted out of all the files. I had a, fe had a feeling I'd find one of you here tonight. It's the same as last time. I'm glad I caught you before. She runs her hands up and down her arms. I'm not so sure you did. Move aside to show her the open containment locker. Dr. Singer's eyes go wide. It wasn't me. Then who? Yeah. You've been acting strangely today. Hey! Without warning, Dr. Singer has me by the lapel of my coat. He's dragging me out into the hallway. Hey, what's up? Yanks me into a dead sprint, still not explaining herself, barely able to keep up. Dr. Singer pulls the containment breach alarm, we pass it, and I realize just how much trouble we're in. The alarms are deafening. I've only ever heard them once before, and the side I'd been transferred from. Fourteen people had died that night. The hallway rocks violently. Fine dust pours from the concentrated ceiling, catching in my throat as we run. A coarse horse lead, my lungs already burning from the unfamiliar exercise. My worst fears are confirmed as we round the final corner. As I can see is a cloud of billowing dust and sound debris. Huge shards of rock have gouged the walls on the far end of the corridor, exploding from the wall that had been SCP-682's temporary containment chamber.
Which I'm not ironically me coughing, by the way. Give me a moment. How are you keeping up, chat? I jump as a hand grasps my trouser leg. To my horror, I recognize Dr. Vita, the fourth and final researcher in our cohort. His lips and chin are crimson with blood. His torso has been pulped by metal shrapnel. Barely have time to process this before a shape looms out of the new hole in the wall. It's big. And ahead of us, Dr. Fields is standing with his arms raised towards it. I can't see his face, but I know he's wearing SCP-8008. The massive keto class anomaly crawls over to the pile of debris. Yellow acid smoke pours off its body. It spots Dr. Singer and I. My body freezes, pinned by those hateful yellow eyes. My beloved, my queen. You look so small next to her. I did as you asked. Now we can be together. Disgusting. He snaps Dr. Fields up in his crocodilian law jaw faster than I can believe. <laughs> Dr. Fields screams like and as screams as SCPX Yeah, let me retake that one. Dr. Fields screams as SCP-682 shakes him back and forth like a doll. I can hear his body breaking. SCP-8008 flies off and lands near my feet. A wave of desire to put them on washes over me. And let's put them on. Peace. Hey! She holds Dr. Fields by the torso in one of her hands. The screams become gurgles as my mind struggles to understand what it's seen. Dr. Fields' body seems to dissolve in ragged chunks. There's something unseen is tearing him apart. And it occurs to me, he is. And he's gone. The fire erupts from behind us. He succeeded you. I hit the floor just as bolts went through the air around me, sending us sprays of sharp stone when they hit the tiles. Above my head. Even above the sirens and the gunfire, I can hear SCP-682 shriek as it enters a rage state. The floor rocks under me as the other section of the building collapses. Intently. Oh, debris and bullet stops. Even sound seems muted. I decide to risk it. Carefully, I open one dust covered eye to see. There are barely gray feet standing just inches from my face. After a moment of confusion, it dawns on me. SCP 096. SCP 096 has been moved into the adjoining cell block for testing. I cover my eyes in an instant. Praying I haven't seen its face somehow. 96 is shy guy. To SCP to see SCP-096 its face is certain death. You voice rings through the high ceiling chamber. Followed by a help from SCP-96 as it too enters a rage state upon being glimpsed. Blindly begin to crawl away from the sounds of fighting as the two anomalies clash. But desperately going in the opposite direction. A huge chunk of concrete strikes me in the back, crushing the air from my lungs in a whoosh. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. My vision goes soft, wrap the edges. The life is slowly crushed out of me. Is this it? Something is pulling on my legs. Something impossibly strong. I feel hands around my ankles. I gasp as the pressure on my chest is released. The light returns to the world. Uh, hello? You're okay. I've got you. I will never let the others have you. Hey, new friend! Please subscribe and come have fun again! He's gone. I hear voices. I hear Dr. Sherman. Shouting? Why is he shouting? Doctor, can you... Sorry. Doctor, can you hear me? I try to respond, but it turns into a hacking cough. My throat is full of dust. You're all right. Helps me sit up and waits while I cough a while longer. Miraculously, I seem to be unharmed. 
Let's get you to the medical ward. He supports me as I stand, glancing backwards as we turn to leave. Sleep. See the slab of concrete that almost killed me. The trail through the dust from where SCP-173 had dragged me to safety. Why? Well, that was a skip. That is... Oh, that's good. Well, it's, it's good that those kind of predictions are wrong, but they're early. I've hooked up several machines in a private room. My heartbeat sounds quick and irregular on the monitor. Isn't this a bit excessive? Dr. Sherman looks up at me from his chair in the corner. His lips twist into a wry grin. You know, for someone so smart, you're a real idiot. Heh. <laughs> Fair. I lean back in my nest of pillows. Yeah, I, I get you there, Rage. I'm happy for you. I'm glad you got your power back. Welcome to this dating sim experience. You're along for the ride. You have no escape. I also just realized I haven't even had anything to eat today. Okay, we continue. I lean back in my nest of pillows. Is Dr. Singer all right? Yeah, she's fine. She had the sense to run when she saw what happened to Dr. Fields. Oh, wait, sorry. Yeah, yeah, she's fine. She had the sense to run when she saw what happened to Dr. Fields. But not awkwardly, he stands and hands me a glass of water from the bedside table. Between the glass, not realizing how thirsty I'd been. I mean, you just ingested a shit ton of dust. On the breach, Dr. Sherman saw you said that and shoves his hand in his pockets. Word around, this, word around sight as they were able to recontain both SCP-682 and SCP-096, but, but SCP-173 but SCP is missing. I tell him SCP-173 saved my life. Containment chamber was found open. We need to find SCP-173. I think I might be in danger. That's as much as I'm willing to say. Dr. Sherman's always narrow. The task force personnel are already down to, in the tunnel searching for it. They won't find it. It. They won't find it. Right. Why not? How do I... How do I explain it to him? We need to ask someone who is there. Every, everyone who saw what happened was torn apart other than you. Not everyone. Absolutely not. No, absolutely not. They're on. I don't have a lot of time. It's hard to explain. He crosses his arms for a moment, then seems to deflate. Fine. I suppose someone has to keep watch over you. Joe runs down my spine at that. I can't help but wonder if SCP-173 is watching me even now. There's no time to lose. There's no time to lose! Do nothing! Right. We've been through enough today. Dr. Sherman visibly relaxes. I'd hoped you'd see, re you'd see reason, sir. You want to play cards? It might help. I smile. Your thing. Dr. Sherman and I stayed up late into the night playing cards. Even after all these years, I still can't read his poker face. Totally cleaned me out. He was right, though. He did take my mind off things. They gonna make this harder at any point, I wonder. Okay. 
25,000. Some of them are sideways and some of them aren't. That last night. Jesus, you're not my date. Hope I didn't scare you. And today, thanks for letting me out of my cage. Oh, lovely. You're welcome. Weird, blinky smile. Alright. Uh, it's breaking. Oh, hello, organs and eyeballs. Is it just like group? So many of them, it's not a, does it doesn't actually seem to be match five. Checking in. Oh, this is an interesting one. We'll just leave that there. I really ain't seeing much. They added too many shapes. I will kill you. Well, now I had no choice. That's SCP-173 you just saw. Where am I? The tunnel's beneath the facility. I hear footsteps and shouting. Is that? I hit the ground. What happened? Fallen out of bed. Now a floor is cold on my cheek. What was that nightmare? My wrist hurts. Probably ripped the IV out and the heart rate monitor, considering the alarm telling me I flatlined. The door to my room flies open. Doctor! I look up to see my assistant silhouetted in the doorway. The next moment he's at my side. Oh, thank God. I thought, I'm fine. Just a nightmare. He looks at me strangely, somewhere between concern and relief. Some nightmare. Come on. Let me help you. I sit on the edge of my bed, rubbing my sore wrists. The morning shift nurse arrives in a moment later to check my vitals. Mr. Sherman hangs back, fidgeting with his favorite pen. Oh, there's a horse? The, noise, the nurse forces a smile for my benefit, but says nothing. Then Dr. Sherman and I are alone again. It was SCP-173. Dr. Sherman looks up at me, in my nightmare. Is. He's down in the tunnels. I think I even know where. No, you don't. It was just a dream. I'm not sure anymore. A sigh, remembering the peaceful atmosphere last night. It's not like we've got any other options. Dr. Sherman runs a hand through his hair. I still think using the lashes on SCP-682 where SCP-096 is a bad idea. They agree with him there. Only one thing to do. Head into the tunnels. We prepare for the descent into the tunnels beneath the facility as quickly as possible. Dr. Singer, Sherman, and I are kitted with industrial strength, flashlights, and rations. Just in case. We're also outfitted with head-mounted radios we should work even deep underground. I feel like a D-class. I grin, but Dr. Singer is stone-faced. The six task force personnel assigned to us don't seem to find it any funnier. Really wish I had a way to track SCP-173 and acting as live bait. We need to stick together down there. Personnel have gotten lost in these tunnels. Why exactly? Why exactly did we build this site on top of a cave system again? It's actually a fair question. The one above our pay grade probably knows. Great. 
One more thing to worry about down there. Burrows in the dark. Check. He's fiddling with SCP-8008, which is tucked into his breast pocket. He head down the last flight of stairs into the tunnels. Down here, the metal floors give way to rough stone. It's humid down here. So cold. Every time I exhale, a little cloud of water vapor is illuminated by my flashlight. We travel for some time through the seemingly endless tunnels, always heading down. We pass through several test point waypoint camp. That's force waypoint camps, which lights. have been set up to coordinate. There are no injured among search. them, but what they're tracking doesn't leave injured. Down. All the way down. Must have been at least an hour. My shoulders are aching from the tension. We come to a passage with nearly a dozen offshoot tunnels. I have no idea which way we should go. Um... We all stop in our tracks, suddenly on high alert. The task force personnel scan the darkness with their gun-mounted flashlights. The slim beams of light are insignificant in the oppressive blackness. What is it? Or Sherman. We all look at each other. Dr. Sherman isn't here. We need to backtrack. We have to... Nobody move. She says it so calmly that everyone freezes instantly. Her eyes are so wide as she looks among task force personnel. They look equally terrified. I thought we only had six task force members with us. In the span of an instant, the man standing next to me is turned into a red slurry. Sprays the side of my face. Run! Here and I book it for a random exit. I'm not even sure where we're going. Down. We're still going. <laughs> Dr. Singer goes down behind me. Something has her leg. I can't see. And then she's gone. For a long moment, everything is perfectly silent. I leave my own ragged breathing echoing back to me. And I hear quiet scraping noise. I run as fast as I can. My lungs are burning. My legs screaming. A sudden drop in the path sends me sprawling. My wrist. A wave of nausea rolls me as I curl on the ground protecting my arm. I can't. I look up. This is the cavern from my dream. And there at the far end is SCP 173. I almost don't even recognize it. There in front of it is Dr. Sherman. He turns to look and... What? Where am I? This place seems familiar. Where's Dr. Sherman? Where's SCP-173? Where's... I'm sure I can actually be good at it this time. Get it back. Well, interesting. He's trying to convince me to spare you. Our friends. So I'll give you a deal. Let's have a staring contest. You move. I'll kill him. You don't. I'll take you instead. Ready?
Well, okay then. I'm actually unironically trying to sit. Okay. Hello. I can't move. You really do care about me, don't you? I knew it all along. I can't. <laughs> the achievement is just named Smooch the Nut. Suddenly I feel her lips against mine. I feel like... <gasps> SCP-8008 Log Date, November 1st, 1999. SCP-173 has been recontained. Dr. Singer was never recovered from the tunnels. Dr. Sherman was found wandering in the dark some time later. He seems to have no memory of what transpired, is being interrogated. Final researcher is to be concerned, Mia. SCP-8008, log date, November 22nd, 1999. The final researcher has been found, alive, and wearing SCP-8008. The researcher seems unchanged. But any attempt to remove the glasses results in immediate cardiac arrest. Testing must continue. The rest of the data has been expunged. Oh shit. SCP-8008 locate November 1st, 1999. I, I gotta say, I, I won. Bye! <laughs>